Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at if expressions in Kotlin. So in the last video, we saw the if statement. If you're a new programmer, hopefully you've now practiced that a bit and you're now feeling a little bit familiar with it. In this video, we're going to take a look at an if expression, which is something that I've only seen really in Kotlin, as far as I can think. So a really common thing to do in programming in general is to set the value of a variable based on some kind of if statement. Let's have an if statement. I'm going to have a variable of some kind here. Let's call it empty and set that equal to true. Then we'll have a if statement. So let's say if empty print line refill else print line OK. So if you run this, that condition of course is true, so it's going to say refill. Now a really common thing to do would be to just set the value of a variable and print this out later on. And that will help a bit with not mixing up the code that interacts with the user, like code that displays something on a console in this case, with the logic of our program. It's always best to separate out code that belongs to what we call a view, the bit that interacts with the user and displays information, from the logic of the program. So let's write here val status and we could make that let's say a string and now we could set status in here so let's say status equals refill in this case or in this case we say status equals OK and then at the end we can just print status. So now instead of sprinkling our code with print line statements. We've just got one print line statement and the rest of it is just logic. So let's run this and it's going to do exactly what you expect. In this case, since empty is set to true, it will say refill. But Kotlin lets us do this in a shorter way that doesn't involve having to repeat the name of the variable like this. So I can just say here, let's move this down, val status equals and then I can get rid of the status equals down here and this works just as before. So if I run this, status is going to get set to refill as long as empty is true. We don't actually need to declare the type now either. So now we've got this and that works as you'd expect. So this is called an if expression because remember an expression in programming is something that basically reduces to a single value, in this case to a string. Status here is going to get set to whatever is on the last line of each of the blocks of code. So you can still put multiple lines of stuff in there if you really need to for some reason. But whatever's on the last line is what is going to determine the value of the status variable here. Now with if statements and also if expressions as we see here, the curly brackets are actually optional. But in that case, the if or the else or whatever only applies to what's on the very next line and that can get quite confusing because you can end up thinking that things are part of the if statement or expression that actually aren't part of it. So I would recommend always putting in the curly brackets. However, there is an exception that we could make here for that rule because we could write this probably all on one line and there if we miss out the brackets it kind of looks a bit easier even to read than this does. So let's change this to status 1 so that I can then have status 2. And let's rewrite it. So I'm going to say here val status 2 equals if, and let's say empty, then we want to set status 2 to refill, else we want to set it to OK. So this is really the same as what we had above. It's really just that the curly brackets have been missed out and it's all been written on one line. And other programming languages do have some form of this. Usually it's called the ternary operator and usually it looks kind of confusing. And I think this form of it is actually a lot nicer, the form that we have in Kotlin. So now if I do print line status 2, status 2 is going to come out at the moment as refill or we could set this to false and then it's going to come out as OK. So you can see here we've got 
okay. Now one last thing to say about this, which is that if you use an if expression like this or like this, the else becomes mandatory. So you can have else if sections in there, but you can't have just an if by itself as you can with an if statement. You've got to have the else in. And the reason for that becomes clear if you think about it, because we've got to set these variables to something now. And if we didn't have an else, what would this actually get set to? So for that reason, in an if expression, you always have to have a else. So that's it for this video. If you're new to programming, I recommend first typing out these two slightly different forms of the if expression. Check that you can actually get this working and then try playing around with it a little bit. See if you can alter it and make it do slightly different things. And don't forget that this does not have to be a Boolean variable. You could put a condition in here, like temperature less than three or whatever you have, providing you've got a temperature variable in your program. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.